Welcome back to Project Clio, building an ass. In this episode, we'll be discussing the mainboard we'll be using for this project, the ASRock X570D4I-2T. Though not initially my first choice, having preferred the Epic 3251D4I-2T instead, but due to stock availability at the time of order, I ended up going with the 570D4 i 2 instead. What a mouthful. In the box, you obviously will find the main board itself, of course. We have the ATX backplate. We have the ATX power adapter, with its four pin connectors already been removed. Please watch episode four videos to see why. There's also a Oculink to SATA adapter cable as well as the SATA drive power cable for when using the DC in power supply. The ASRock Rack X570D4I2T is a MITX board measuring 17 by 17 centimeters or 6.7 by 6.7 inches when talking in the off scale. This board uses the AMD AM4 platform featuring the X570 chipset Starting at the top right of the board we have the dual 10 gigabit Ethernet network ports provided by the onboard Intel X550 AT2 controller hiding on the heatsink here Between them is the rear USB ports and the dedicated network port for the onboard management Below that is the four SO DIMM slots allowing up to 128 gigabytes of non-ECC and unbuffered ECC DDR4 memory up to 2933 speeds to be installed. At the bottom right of the board is the 4-pin ATX and the 8-pin DC in connectors providing power to the board as well as the CMOS back backup battery. The 4-pin ATX and 8-pin DC in connectors allow flexibility of either using a ordinary ATX power supply or a server rack orientated DC in power supply system. For now we're just going to be using a ATX style power supply. Next is the first of the fan headers as well as the heatsink plant covering the X570 chipset itself. Here we have the USB 3.1 header as well as the two by four Oculint connectors that can be configured for either PCIe or SATA use. Power outlet for the SATA drives if we're using DC in power supply system. Here we have two more fan headers as well as the system panel header, the speaker head header and the auxiliary panel header. On the side of the board we have a piece 16 time slot which will work either PCIe 3 or PCIe 4 depending on the CPU model installed. Due to the size of the ITX board they are limited to a single card slot though a PCIe riser card can be installed and used in conjunction with the PCIe slot bifurcation options present in the BIOS will allow more than one card to be used with this mainboard but usually in rack mount type cases where the cards are mounted horizontally. Next to that is the heatsink for the power regulation components of the CPU. Now to the top left of the board are the Intelligent Platform Management Bus header and the Baseboard Management Controller SM Bus header as well as a Serial Communications Port header. There are currently no plans to use these but they are there if we decide to extend these management features to our system later down the track. At the top of the board is the unit identification purpose LED switch. Now this is a handy f feature not likely to be used by myself but in a server rack full of machines it does come in handy especially when a remote operator is trying to identify a particular machine to an on-site technician. The remote operator can ha have the LED switch to start flashing signaling the technician which is the correct machine. Once the right machine has been identified the on-site technician can just press the LED switch and the remote operator will be alerted that they have found the machine in question. Very handy. 
Below that is the A-Speed AST2400 baseboard management controller living underneath the M.2 slot. This provides the remote management features that allow us to control the machine remotely even when it's turned off. The M.2 slot supplies, supports drives up to 2280 length, supporting PCIe in either 3.0 or 4.0 speeds, again depending on the CPU installed, or it can be used in SATA mode. At the centre of the board is the CPU socket, which is of the AM4 type. Now this board supports uh, the AMD Ryzen 3000 and 5000 series processors, as well as the Ryzen 3000, 4000 and 5000 G series processors featuring Radeon graphics, as well as the Ryzen 3000, 4000 and 5000 Pro series processors. Let's not do that again. Please note, even though this is a AM4 board, this board actually requires a Intel LGA 11.5X type cooler to be installed. And the fact that this board does actually have a CPU reinforcing bracket for the cooler glued to the back of the board, thus reducing the choice of coolers to a top-down type screw, unless you remove the bracket. Also, that our case is limited in cooler height, this does restrict our choices of cooler even further, especially in Australia. For more information regarding this issue and more about the board itself, please read the excellent article on the X570D4i-2T by the Serve the Home on their website. Link in the description. Overall, the board does support a number of server grade features, which unfortunately not will be used, but it's nice to have nonetheless. The fact that the it is sporting a number of server grade features does lead to a bit of a hefty price tag and they can be found in Australia for about $800 Australian for just the board itself but it is a server grade product and it will be going to a NASA that will be running 24-7 small price to pay for what should provide great reliability and a long lifespan to boot now that'll be all for the ASRock Rack X570D4i-2T mainboard for this video. In an upcoming video, we will be discussing what components will be installed with this board. See you next time. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, please do not hesitate to like and subscribe, which will help you notify you on future content. As always, have a wonderful day. Goodbye.